punch through with a phenomenon that can happen in any transistor. However, in short channel transistors, it is the dominant failure mechanism for MOSFETs. So, punch through is a failure mechanism for MOSFETs that was pretty much uh, um, not something you have to care about in long channel transistors. But in short channel transistors, it is the main failure mechanism. So transistors can fail, they can burn off and, you know, become useless if one of their insulators is exposed to a field that is high enough to break it down irreversibly. This typically happened in most devices, most long channel devices, when the oxide was broken down. So if you look at the oxide, and um, it's better to draw it uh, more evenly. So if you look at the oxide here, if you apply a gate potential that is high enough to exert a field across the oxide that is higher than its breakdown potential, then the oxide will break down. Normally, this kind of breakdown is irreversible. Sometimes it is, depending on uh, the applied voltage and the conditions. In short channel transistors, there's another kind of quote-unquote breakdown that could happen, which uh, is more common, and it's called punch-through. But again, it's important to understand that punch-through could occur in long channel transistors. It just happened at such high potentials that it was not something you usually had to care about. So, uh, what is punch through? Punch through asks the question of, there's a depletion region around the source. There's also a depletion region around the drain. Typically, the depletion region around the drain is much bigger than the depletion region around the source because drain potential is higher than source potential. So it's more appropriate to draw it this way. And so punch through asks the question, what if we keep increasing drain potential higher and higher, above and above the operating voltages, so much above the source, uh, the, uh, the power supply value, that the depletion zone from the drain touches the depletion zone from the source. So now these two depletion zones are touching each other. And so the situation we are used to when the transistor is cut off so that VGS is less than V threshold, the situation we are used to is that yes, there is a depletion region and it's healthy around the drain. And yes, there's a depletion region and it's healthy around the source. And these depletion regions help to prevent the passage of any current between the source and the drain. And so if you apply VDS greater than zero, you will not see current flowing between the drain and the source, simply because there is a reverse biased PN junction here and a reverse biased PN junction here. And so these two depletion zones are basically keeping the current from flowing between the source and the drain. This is a little bit misleading. The Depletion zones are not actually keeping the charge from moving between the source and the drain. What's keeping the charge from moving between the source and the drain is the high barrier between the source and the body and the body and the drain. So this is the body and this is the drain. And it's at a lower energy than the source because it has a higher potential. And this is the source. This is V built in and this is V built in plus VDS if we assume that the body and the source are at the same potential. And so now these large barriers are keeping electrons from moving from the source into the channel and from the drain into the channel and keeping any current from moving between the two terminals. When you apply gate potential, this lowers the whole thing, causing electrons to flood from the source into the drain and turning the transistor on. So it's not actually the uh, the depletion zones that are keeping the current from flowing. And that comes from a misunderstanding of the depletion zones as insulators. They are not insulators. They have insulating properties, but they have a band gap, which is exactly the same as the band gap of silicon. So depleted silicon has the same band gap as non-depleted silicon. So it's not an insulator. An insulator has to have a large band gap. And so what's happening here in this situation where the two depletion zones touch What's going to happen here is that you're actually going to have a huge current flow because you have a potential between the drain and the source and you have a uh, favorable 
electric field promoting the flow of electrons from the source to the brain. And so you'll have IDS flowing and it's going to be big. So does that mean that current can flow through these, this now very thick depletion region? Yes, it can. Current will flow through thick depletion regions uh, if there is an appropriate electric field. It will flow through it like there's no problem. So current flows through the uh, a base collector junction of an active BJT and it will be a very healthy current moving through uh, a very healthy depletion zone. There's nothing stopping the current here. In fact, the current is going to be so large that the transistor is very likely to be burnt off forever and to be uh, destroyed. So this is a process called punch through. So punch through is basically when the drain manages to punch its way through to the source causing a large current to flow to the source even when the transistor is supposed to be cut off. So when does punch through happen? Punch through happens when the drain depletion zone and the source depletion zone manage to touch each other. So the width of the drain depletion region is going to be square root of uh, VBI plus VDB into 2 epsilon by QNA and the width of the source depletion zone is going to be VBI, square root VBI, plus VSB into uh, 2 epsilon over Q and A. And so we are concerned that the summation of these two depletion zones is going to be equal to or greater than the length of the channel. So what is the potential at which a punch through happens? Let's make a few reasonable assumptions. Let's assume that the body and the source are shorted to each other. So VSB is equal to zero. This allows us to uh, simplify this term. Uh, and it also allows us to um, make this VDS instead of VDB. So then this would be VDS. But also when uh, VDS is enough, so that this summation is equal to L, we can call this V punch through. And therefore, we can uh, remove this, delete this, and say that this is V punch through. So the punch through potential can be obtained from this equation. It's obvious that the value of punch through voltage is going to be much higher for long channel transistors than it is for short channel transistors, which is why this is a, a phenomenon that we only observe for short channel transistors.